Karma is very important in our lives. We all want to have a good and better life. And that we can only have by doing good karmas. So, what is the concept? Many people come to me asking about karma. First, I will give you an outlook. And after that, I will come to how to see the karma using horoscope and astrology. Horoscope based on the birth chart and astrology based on Prashna. Right? That's what I am trying to say. So if you have known what is there in Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is bewildered by the fact that he is having to fight with his own relatives and gurus. Krishna comes to his rescue and Krishna gives him the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. Now in this complete process, if you see, Krishna does not tell to Arjun that, okay Arjun, these are your bad karmas because of which these results have came to you. These, these are the remedies. You go and perform these remedies and the bad karmas will be abolished and you will be free from all of this. This is not a thing that we have done. Instead, what Krishna does in Bhagavad Gita is that he tells Arjun about multiple ways, right? Raji Yoga, Dhyani Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, all of these yogas and tells him that whatever seems suitable to you, you should take that path and that will help you. Now, what is this? Karmas you have done in a previous life. Now, based on this karma, you have got the reward or punishment in heaven or hell. That is reward or punishment, right? To repay that karma, you come in this human life. Now, while doing a karma, you say a bad karma or a bad, bad karma or a good karma. Thoughts are there in the mind. These thoughts become permanent. These thoughts are in the manas. This manas is what is represented by moon. Chandrama manas ojata. Moon is the manas of Chandrama, which is better translated as psyche than mind. So this particular approach of moon only indicates mind is incomplete. This is the Vedic mind, not the English mind that we somehow understand. So this is also there in Bhagavad Gita, beautifully illustrated in the translation of Iskon, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. That if someone, whatever type of emotion one is having at the time of death, the same time of life they have in future. Now, because the end time is not certain, no one knows when the end time will come. It is recommended to have good thoughts always in mind. Only because of these thoughts, the psyche of the new life, the challenges and the conditions will be decided. So you see, if someone does a karma, you see, if someone does a bad karma out of jealousy, the karma is done, the karma is committed, the reward or punishment will be in heaven or hell or to repay the karma, you will have to come into this life, but the emotion of jealousy will remain in your mind, will remain in your psyche. This jealousy is what you carry from the previous life to the next life and because you have done bad karma, generally the situation in the life will not be very favorable and this jealousy will also be there in the psyche. Now whatever decisions the person will take will be according to just jealousy, which will force the native to commit more bad karmas, making his life very difficult. So the scenario is that the good results and bad results are fixed in life. No one is getting more bad results or more good results. When these results will come for how long they will stay and what will be the intensity is fixed. In this life, you are free to do Kriyaman Karma. You are free to do the choice. And after the choice is made, the result and the repercussion is fixed by the law of karma, which is decided by God unpartially and equally for everyone. This is what the Vaidhi philosophy tells you. So if you are suffering through bad karma and you continue to do good karma, the intensity of the bad karma decreases. The time for which you will have to go through the bad karma decreases. And very soon, Good karma starts fructifying. The good karma from the previous life is there and good Kriyaman karma you have done in this life. This makes you sure that the good karma result that is going to come in future stays for long and is more intense. On the other hand, if you continue to do bad karma, then the same thing happens with good karma. If any good karma is being fructified from the past, the duration of fructification and the intensity become lower and it is soon changed to bad karma and because the person have been doing bad karma in this life as well and there is bad karma from the previous life, the intensity and the duration of bad karma is very high. So the real approach of dealing with karmas because you cannot do anything about the past life karmas. 
it is useless to know about them. The best thing to do is have a right approach in this life, do good karmas in this life, which will make sure because when you are going to enjoy the result of karma, it will be a mixture of the result from previous life and the things that you have done in current life. So this is the message of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita that you keep on doing good karmas and by doing good karmas, you will be able to make more good karmas which will significantly belittle your bad karmas and more enjoyments will be there in life, right? This is the approach of Sri Krishna. Now leaving this aside, astrologically speaking, what does indicate the good karmas and what indicates the bad karmas and how you can see them in the horoscope, the karmic fructification is my topic for today. Now, in this process, you see, I love teaching basics, misunderstood basics in my courses, right? Tattva, Guna, and all of these things. Right? Tattva, Guna, and these fundamental things are the base, are the most important tool in understanding of astrology, right? You see, sages have observed the nature of sun. So some are astronomical observations which can be known through the eyes like sun is hot, sun causes the day, sun is very punctual, rises and sets every day. The motion of sun is very, you know, well designated, well designed. These things can be observed by naked eyes. But how do you, how they, do they know that sun indicate father as well? Of course, they know it from observation. But the basic thing behind this formulation is also the understanding of tattvas and gunas. And in each of my courses, I try to teach this very in depth to students so that students actually understand how astrological principles and formulas are made so that they can make their own formulas. The same thing I am going to cover in the maximum detail that I have covered so far in my forthcoming course, Secrets of Parashar, which is a very comprehensive 20 plus class course starting in the second half of August. Anyone wishing to master astrology and make very great predictions looking for a one-stop, very comprehensive course on astrology should join this course. This course is going to be phenomenal. However, coming back to my topic, if you observe the tattvas, I will talk about only two tattvas, the water tattva and the air tattva. Air tattva is signified by Saturn Rahu and the airy Rashi is Gemini Libra Aquarius. Water Tattva is represented by Moon, Venus and the watery Rashi is Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. I'll give you an example. After a hot day, in the evening, when you come home, you see after a hot day, the air becomes cool very quickly. So by the time sunset happens at 6, 6.30, around 8, the warmth from the air disappears. It quickly changes to cold air only in one to hour of the night. However, regarding water, water have memory, water have emotions. This is proved by many experiments recently and our sages know, knew about it right you know, very, very much from the beginning. That's why they have recommended many things, many activities, many kriyas using which one can influence the nature of water and use it for their benefit. So if you observe water on a very hot day, even till 10, 10, 30, 11 in the night, if you open the tap, hot water will keep on coming because the day was hot, the water was boiling. So you see, after infusing with heat, air becomes cooler quickly as compared to what? This same approach goes with karma. The karma of the previous life, the long lasting impact of this karma is seen through the water element and the quick impact of that karma is seen through air element. Now what is the longer impact of the karma and what is the shorter impact of the karma? Longer impact of karma is the activity events that are going to happen in life which is signified by the air element and shorter quick Effects of the karma is the mind and psyche that I was talking about in the beginning, which is indicated by watery signs and watery planets. Both the planets in horoscope does indicate karmas. Now, everyone have a lot of Sanchit karmas. 
few of these sanchit karmas you will have to go through in this life that is prarabdh karma seen through your horoscope but throughout the life you keep on doing different karmas that is called kriyaman karma and the result repercussion etc of this karma is seen through the prashna chart so this principle can be applied in prashna chart and this principle should also be applied in natal chart in the same manner it should be applied in prashna chart in the same manner it should be applied in the natal chart i am going to take one natal chart example but in the same manner it is to be applied in prashna chart as well right the point of being very simple the planet situated in watery rashi is the planet being influenced by watery planets does indicate those areas those emotions those psyche which comes through the which, which comes from the psyche and understanding of native which if good should be increased if bad should be decreased and controlled and the karmic repercussions are seen through airy signs and airy planets which if good should be increased if bad should be decreased the karma is good or bad will be seen with respect to the planet situated in these rashis planet afflicting these planet influencing these planets either in a positive way by being in exaltation on rashi mul trikon vargottam or in a negative way by being inimical by being malefic planets by being in combustion debilitation planetary war etc right so quickly coming to the example to make you understand it better you come to the horoscope of sri ramkrishna paramahans talking about the psyche and understanding of sri ramakrishna in the horoscope if you see as i told you the psyche and the approach that anyone is going to take is seen through planets in fiery rashi of planet in watery rashis and watery planets now you see watery rashi cancer scorpio and pisces scorpio is having ketu ketu indicates spirituality ketu indicates tenderness ketu indicates purity and clarity of mind thoughts and emotions which he was having in his psyche which became his greatest blessing the child like attitude is given by ketu on the other hand you see an exalted venus in pisces which does indicate respect towards woman and the motherly emotion which was in his psyche which gave him great progress apart from that moon is there with sun this sun gave him humility which was also a great thing in his psyche and moon is there with mercury now moon and sun are friendly planets so it is good but with respect to mercury mercury had became good because first of all this mercury is vargottam secondarily this mercury is dikbali because of this good mercury being influenced by moon the child like simplicity and the approach that i don't know much these approach in his psyche were his greatest blessings right so to simply put it if the watery rashis or the watery planet venus we have already talked about venus in his horoscope venus is not influenced by any planet as such so i did not take venus coming to psyche a positive sun will indicate because sun indicates ego a negative sun will indicate that the person can be egoistic and because of being egoistic the person can be ignorant this psyche should be controlled the control of this psyche will give good kriyaman karma which will result in good period of good period in life with more intensity and longer duration as i told you in the beginning right so the bad result on the psyche level the bad result indicated by sun is ego the good result indicated by sun is humility right the person thinking that i know nothing the person being a humble child of the godhead why because sun indicates godhead sun indicates temple so does jupiter right so these are the two things for sun either ways 
for a normal person ramkrishna paramhans is a very elevated soul for a normal person you don't bother into whether sun is positive or negative in spirituality you just go by the approach that we are most pitiful person and we should always strive to become good right so just leave the negative quality and try to imbibe the good quality is the basic point moon will not have any quality because moon will be the significator himself when the mars is positive it will indicate supporting people achieve things which are good for them when mars is negative it will indicate person being competitive so if mars is connected to these planets don't be competitive try to support people and push them above yourself right do their benefit even if it costs little bit loss for you that is all okay don't put yourself in danger but just put people first if mars is the planet mercury when negative gives the approach to person that i know everything on the other hand mercury when positive does indicate to the person that i know nothing and the person is always receptive to new knowledge jupiter when powerful sorry jupiter when negative indicates that i am correct i am doing everything correct i know about dharma whatever i think correct is correct this should be controlled and the positive trait of jupiter where the person is always ready to learn where the person is simple child like and when the person believes more in doing then gathering knowledge this positive attribute of jupiter should be taken into consideration you see as negative jupiter is pandit he is like i know everything a positive jupiter despite he knows everything believes in experience the positive jupiter is like okay i have little bit of knowledge but whatever you say that i will take and i will experiment on it and whatever is my humble finding i will go by that so the person does not think that he is an authority saturn a negative saturn will indicate laziness and because because it is tamas saturn is tamas right so saturn will indicate laziness and because of this laziness person will not be able to do his dharma do his duties which should be avoided and a positive saturn will indicate discipline right so doing things in proper discipline is needed most importantly doing activity is indicated by saturn so the person should not put anything on i will do it tomorrow the person should do everything as soon as possible and because saturn also indicates lower people uplifting lower people by helping them the same thing of mars what mars does what mars does mars pushes people above him saturn takes people with him helps people supports people that should be done when rahu is there rahu will generally indicate cleverness right the person think that i am very clever i am street smart i am deserving because of that i got this this is a negative attribute of rahu which should be changed to the approach of working together a positive rahu is a clear hearted simple blunt person who says everything as it is who talks about truth no matter people will judge him what people will think of him he does not care of these things he just talk of bare truth and showing cleverness smartness manipulating people stay away from that because these are the traits of a negative rahu a positive ketu gives you a child like simplicity like a you know like a person without head simplicity curiosity child like curiosity child like simplicity is given by ketu on the other hand when the ketu is negative it gives aloof tendencies to the native where the native does not want to talk discuss or receive anything but is interested in his own thoughts and ideas and thinks of himself as superior that is one thing this was related to psyche now related to the longer karma right what is the longer karma that the person is supposed to go through in life things which will happen for sure certainly 100% this thing is seen through what airy rashis and airy planets airy planet saturn rahu airy rashi aquarius 
Gemini, Libra. Now see, first of all, Aquarius is having sun. Now when it comes to activity, you see house lords primarily. So ascendant is having sun, that is seventh house lord, which indicates that the person have to get married. Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa, despite being a sannyasi, was married to Sri Sharda. Moon is there in ascendant, which does indicate competition. Sixth lord in the ascendant indicates competition and disease. He suffered cancer and he had, I will not say he had competition. No one is equal to Ramakrishna Paramahansa, but, but at his point of time, there were many contemporaries and one of these contemporaries were very major influences on Sri Vivekanand in the beginning as well. So this competition is also indicated. Third thing is Mercury in the Ascendant. Mercury in the Ascendant being fifth lord does indicate that he will attract a lot of students. For a spiritual person, students are akin to children. Unlike those spiritual people who just pursue their spirituality and, you know, leave their mortal coil and become one with God silently. He is not the one who is going to go this way because fifth lord is there in Ascendant. It is indicated that he is going to have a lot of Disciples, followers. And Mercury is also 8th house lord, which does indicate a dreaded disease that he had. But 8th house will also indicate a legacy that he left in the form of Ramakrishna mission. You see, such disciples and such mission was not with his guru, Sri Totapuri and many others. In the 5th house, in the sign Gemini, there is Jupiter, which is the lord of the 2nd house. which does indicate that he had a family. He was very much attached to his family and family members, Hirde and others. It is also the Lord of the 11th house. For a spiritual person like 11th house, it does indicate interest in some mortal things, which he was interested in. In the Rashi Libra, there is Saturn. Saturn is Lord of the Lagna, which does indicate great fame that he had. And it is also the Lord of 12th house, which indicates great spirituality that he had. And this is what makes this horoscope a spiritual horoscope. Rahu is there in the fourth house, not influenced by any planet as such. But because there is Rahu in the fourth house, it does indicate that he have a property at the Chineshwar temple where he was living and doing his things. Right. So this is what is indicated. Now with respect to activity, that is indicated by airy Rashi and airy planets as I have done right here. Based on the nature of the planet. For example, Jupiter is there in the airy Rashi Gemini does indicate that he will have to do the methodical worship as well. So it's not only spirituality, it is also the worship in his case. Right. So for airy planets, planets connected to airy planets and the planets situated in airy Rashi's, you will see the houses indicated by those planets, houses owned by those planets and results related to those houses will happen, happen for sure with the native. That is one thing. And the experience also depends on it. For example, you say if an afflicted seventh lord is going in an airy Rashi or the afflicted seventh lord is connected to Rahu or Saturn, then it does indicate there will be a bad relationship, a bad marriage, which will do great karmic impact in the life of the native. This is activity you cannot do much with respect to the activity. The result of activity is to come and it will come. The thing that you can change is the psyche that you will analyze with respect to moon and with respect to Venus. The type of analysis that I have done with respect to the horoscope, the same type of analysis should be done with respect to the Prashna as well. The only difference is where horoscope indicates karmas for a lifetime, Prashna only indicates intermittent karma. Right. So if someone is asking you a question that why I am suffering this particular thing in my currently, why I am suffering this particular result, you analyze it using the airy rashes and airy planets. If there is a question that how I can improve, how I can make sure that it does not repeat for this, you have watery rashes and watery planets, right? This is how you use this in the case of Prashna. So I believe this is small but very important tip related to the karmic analysis of a horoscope and for a person using the natal chart and Prashna is very clear.
and i have clearly defined how to analyze it with examples as well i believe it will be helpful in you and by incorporating this karmic technique you can take your astrological analysis and understanding of your horoscope one step deeper thank you